Right, let's kick things off. So welcome to the Rick Shields, Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. This is episode 100. It's ridiculous. Live. Yes. I am your host, Rick Shields. I'm here with co-host, got promoted from producer, co-host guy. Yes, nearly got sacked, we got the promotion, which is good. We are looking for a new producer, so who knows, maybe in the future we'll have the, the new person here with us. We might actually put some decent episodes together hey. too, so who knows. Um, what's crazy, like we started this podcast, the kind of, the better version of the podcast, because the real hardcore fans will remember the three OG, horrendous episodes that I did on my own. One word describes those three podcasts. Terrible. Tripe. 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 Wow. It was you talking to your iPhone, your yeah. three episodes. Does anyone listen to them? Does anyone remember them? Shite. Yeah. <laughs> shite. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how the three without me were shite, Rick. I don't know that tells you. Yeah. the front. You need to be careful. We've got some golf balls we're flying around later. Um, yeah, they were pretty tripe. So we started the new version in, was it nine, November I think it was November 2019. And we've had no real fixed home until more recently when mm. we've obviously invested in the studio. But I've written down a list of a few places we've done it in. Okay. What? Whoa. Rick, my wife's in the audience. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, places we've recorded. See if yes. you remember. See if anyone else can remember any. Because I, I think I've remembered as many as I could. Okay, hit me. The very ever first one we did was in the old, old office. Yes. Okay. Then we moved to the old, new office. Yes. Then we moved to the Holiday Inn. With John Robbins. Again, we're still talking about podcasts. Yes. <laughs> We did one with John Robbins. Then we did one at Trafford Golf Centre. Did Tall Paul. Tall Paul. Yes. Who, unfortunately, we wa hopefully Tall Paul was going to be here today. But fortunately, he's actually broke his big toe. And he sent me a picture, and his big toe is absolutely gi ginormous. It's the biggest big toe I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so we were hoping to have him, but unfortunately, not here today. Um, Marriott Worsley Park. Yes, outside and inside. Yep. I've done it in a lot of places. <laughs> your, I've been corrected by your wife today, your orangery. You said conservatory at first. It's an orangery, right? Uh, that, that, was the has anyone listened to that? that was the worst ever audio. It ever. was horrendous. Uh, we've done it in my garage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this sounds weirder every time. <laughs> we've done it in the St. Andrews Old Course Hotel. With Mimouli. There was a pretty cool threesome one. that time. We've done, <laughs> <laughs> we've done it at the open, that house, that weird house that we hired. Don't remember that. The lodges. But they opened this year. Yes. did it dead late at night. Yeah, we were pissed. Um, <laughs> the new studio. The new studio, yeah. And the Lowry. The Lowry thing. And this, I think this has got to be the best, hasn't it? It's up there. This yeah. feels like we're actually in the clubhouse. Yeah, it's up there. Um, and not <laughs> only today can you, can you hear all the interesting stories that we normally do, but mm -hmm. you're not only going to be able to like... Well, no, this is going to sound weird. Go on. You're not only going to hear about Little Ricky today, but you're also going to see I Little Ricky. I don't want Ricky. it... <laughs> I can guarantee this audience do not want to see or hear little Ricky ever again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's, uh, my, my wife, who is also in the audience, when I started to talk about that... Um, She's that... sick of little Ricky, let me tell you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three kids later, she is. My wife, my mum is also in the audience. You don't want to hear about <laughs> um, No, no. She's seen it too many times, yeah. So, what? <laughs> <laughs> when he was little. Oh, Christ. Um, we've also had talked about... Why does every podcast <laughs> end up your cock? For Christ's sake. Welcome. <laughs> we've also... I'll tell you what, we should have done a couple of things when we started the podcast. We should, we should have bought shares in a few businesses. Yes. Monster. Now, I'm annoyed at this. I don't know if anyone else drinks Monster. My favourite is Monster Red. Sugar-free red. I had a borderline addiction. Well, I had an addiction to it. It was four candy day at one point, which is woeful. Cut it down to one. You don't get it. It's gone. You cannot buy it anywhere. You made it sell out. Mm. Also, mini egg bars. Who, who tried the mini egg bar for the back of the podcast? Oh, yes. Yes. I feel like Cadbury should have sent you a check in the post because yeah. you did a lot of promotion on that. Beans on toast. Beans on toast, yes. And famously as well, darts. Yeah. Like we talked a lot about darts. I really miss the darts days. Yeah. And we've actually we've got a little dart challenge later today. Yes. <laughs> we've also had loads of like funny day ricks nightmare golf stories um and then some vips mm. Derek chan Derek chan yes is he here no it's not that much of a vip is no it? i think he lives in somewhere ed brown and ed brown the original og yes is that there no he lives in australia it's okay good fair news fair news and we've had <laughs> loads of amazing guests like could you put it's hard because we've got some guests here tonight which you'll see could you put a favorite guest on 
Who's been your favourite guest on the podcast? <sighs> James Robinson, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I said to him before, he's annoyingly, so yesterday, a quick story, Rick said to me, very nice, I'll buy you a top for the live podcast. I'll buy you a, any, any shirt you want. So that was really, we went to Chapman's yesterday, flash. and I got this little Ralph Lauren number that I'm modelling. <laughs> Sleeves up, chilled out look, yeah, thank you very much. Fucking James Robinson's come in with the same shirt but in white and looks ten times better. <laughs> it does look better. <laughs> Which you will see in a bit. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been a fun journey. Like I say, I can't believe we've got to where we've got to. Um, thank you for all your hard work behind the scenes as well. Thank you for, for listening. Um, and hopefully a hundred more episodes to come. I think so. Why not? Should we get our first guest on? Let's do it. So this guest has actually been on the channel or the show or the podcast now. This is the fourth, this is the fourth time. time. He very nicely did that intro for us a minute ago. Mm -hmm. He's your friend, my friend, everybody's friend. Probably a bit more my friend than yours. But well, I feel like, yeah, he doesn't really talk to me that no. much. But he'll see if he does now. John Robbins. Should we get him Let's on? Get him friend, friend, on John. John Robbins. My mic's come off. Hello. 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 Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Sorry, John. We're just. It's just fixing my mic. Hey, it's Johnny <laughs> Shepard. Yeah. It's <laughs> You what? You what? <laughs> He's had a few. Go on the boys. Come and sit here, pal. <laughs> Did you say go on the boys? Right, that's not, that's not a catchphrase of mine or Rick's. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice sentiment. Uh, but it, it's a bit more Irish than English. That's all I it's more, more Irish than English. No, it doesn't. But, <laughs> but thanks for your enthusiasm. Thanks for trying. <laughs> so, John. Yes, hello. You are no stranger to stage. No stranger to... No. <laughs> He's had six <laughs> times before he came ah. on. Give him a minute. I've got, I've got two questions to ask you. Yeah. One, how are we doing so far? Brilliantly. And two, how the hell do you stop sweating? Because I am hot under these lights. <laughs> um, a lighter shirt. You've got okay. quite a heavy weave there. It is. There. Yeah. Uh, that's bordering on denim. That's quite funny, actually, because you've got that shirt so you can get sweat marks. You haven't got sweat marks. Yeah. You've got a sweaty head. I'm sweating Do you, do like you want to know crazy. top tip? On, on. Um, if you're doing telly and you're sweaty, they tape sanitary towels to the inside of your top. Wow. And the, the worst person for it is Joe Swash. There you go. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. So we're doing all right so far. You're doing brilliantly. Good. I think we're on, almost hitting target on time and everything. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an element of success. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't think many people are going to walk away tonight going, I tell you what, Rick Shields <laughs> kept it to time. <laughs> It's really rare for me. That is very that rare is for me. Super Richie rare for me. Um, right, John, what's interesting? Your journey through golf has been phenomenal recently. Thank you. You started a YouTube channel with your mate Alex yep. called Bad Golf. Yep. We started Bad Golf um, about three years ago as a way of making sure we played golf once a month to prepare for a, a yearly golf trip. And we were both terrible at it. And we thought we loved your videos. We loved all different sorts of YouTube golf videos. And we thought, but there's no one quite as bad as us. So we feel, we feel a bit left out. So we thought, why, why don't we start a golf channel where the people on it are awful, like so bad. Um, and we kept on doing it once a month and Alex kept on doing it once a month and then lockdown happened and my career ceased to exist. So I started playing golf three times a week. Well, do you remember how we found John? So we were looking for a bad golfer. No, that's not how originally, and originally. <laughs> That is, is no, no, that is true, but originally... What you do if you're looking for a bad golfer... I googled how to hire a bad golfer for the day. <laughs> okay, hop. You send out like a, like a bat signal, but just with a sign of a, uh, a shot tracer going like that. <laughs> no, originally we did a coaching video called How to Stop Bad Golf. Yes. And there was comments going, oh no, but the nice guys, ironically, very witty. We then worked out there's a channel called Bad yes, Golf and right. found John, and we needed a bad golfer. Yeah, and weirdly, the very first video we were going to do ever together... We are actually, we never managed to film that in the end. We filmed a different video, which yep. is done all right on YouTube. It's, well, it's my most watched YouTube video by 1.55 <laughs> million views. So it's done well. It's done very well. But what's weird, the first time when we brought John to Manchester was to shoot a different type of video completely. And we've never shot that video. Yep. But we're filming it on Monday. We're filming it on Monday. Banger. Which will be great. So that'll be yeah, really banger. good. So John Seriously, will be back banger. on the channel. And it has the potential to a billion views. I think it could go a billion. <laughs> um, I got a text from you about a year ago, I think, saying, are you free to play Celtic Manor tomorrow? And I was like, oh, no, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I couldn't do it. 
and then text me last week, are you free to go to Adlington Golf Centre? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. They'll all be, tu- they'll all be turned up now on Monday <laughs> watching him. Um, yeah, so that'll be a really fun video. But what's really interesting with you, obviously, you started the channel with bad golf. I don't categorise yourself as a bad golfer anymore. I'm not. Alex is. Yes. Um, but I mean, I just, I started off, I was probably, before I got a handicap, I would say I was off 24, 25. Then I, my goal, as I said to you guys the last time I was on the podcast, was get down to 18 by the time I was 40. Yeah. And in the last six months, it's just kind of plummeted. And I, uh, last week I was off 12.3. That's incredible, and, um, John. It's gone up to 13 now, but... Um, it's mainly, I'll tell you what the biggest difference is and what I think's played the biggest part in that is I stopped trying to think about my swing. Yeah. Stopped trying to imagine it, stopped trying to think about mechanics, where my arms were, where my hips were, just stopped trying to think of all of that and just focused on like how I felt, the decisions I was making on the golf course, stopped playing silly shots, stopped trying to attempt stuff I couldn't do. And you realize there's this ironic thing in golf when when you start is when you're the worst you will ever be. And by definition, you're playing the hardest shots any golfers have to play, because you're always off bad lies. Yeah. You're off slopes, you're off at, in bunkers, you're in trees, you're the in rough. brambles. Yeah. Whereas good golfers, you play these, have to play these lovely lies off fairways and little chips off fringes. Yeah, we so don't, we don't, we'll have to ask James and Chris for that. <laughs> like they're, they're the two good golfers in this room. But a lot of people, what would be interesting is kind of, a lot of people obviously listening as we saw from that exercise at the start, aren't, like James and Chris, how did you get better? And is there any tips you can kind of share with the audience yeah, from a well, real life well, perspective? I, I got really into like the mental side of the game, into course management. And there's this uh, a book which I brought along. It's called The Elements of Scoring by Ray Floyd, right? And there's a list in it of the 10 mistakes that he sees amateur golfers making. Okay. It's a fascinating list. So here's the list, right? Under clubbing, yeah. Swinging too hard. Yeah. Automatically shooting at the flag. Not playing away from trouble. Missing the green on the wrong side. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying for too much out of trouble. Yeah. Trying shots you've never practiced. Yeah. Panicking in the sand. <laughs> misreading turf and lie conditions. And consistently underreading break on greens. Does it say anything there about double hitting chips? Because <laughs> no. I've done that a few times as well. <laughs> but what's amazing about that list, and I think it's quite encouraging for people who are trying to improve, only one of those things is anything to do with your swing. The rest is all to do with decisions you make. Yeah. It's all before you even get to the ball. Yeah. And, um, and that sort of chilled me out. And I also just stopped getting angry. I mean, I still get angry, but I, I do get very angry. But, but my... My anger is limited to about five to 10 seconds, whereas before I would let it spill over into the next shot or the next hole. Or the next day. Or the, or the next <laughs> week. <laughs> and the, some of the best rounds I've shot have actually had some of my worst holes on them. Right. Like first, first hole, double bogey. And I, in, the, in the past, I would, that would, the whole yeah. round would have gone. I'd be so angry with myself. But now I just think, you've got to keep going because you could get four pars. Well, if you're going to make a mistake, in a round of golf, make it be your first hole. Because you can always build from that. You know, it's the worst feeling and in the world if you have a terrible hole, the oh, last hole. Weirdly, you can't do about it. I like starting with a double bogey sometimes. Kind of eases you into it, it's, it? It takes all the expectations off you. Oh, Christ, I've, I've ruined it for today. And then that kind of calmer mindset. I sometimes think I play better golf, weirdly. Well, I, I think when I was obsessing about breaking 100, and I got to the point where I was thinking, if something's wrong with you, you're ill. <laughs> And there's so many shots, a hundred shots, there's so many <laughs> shots. And I was shooting like 101, 102, 100, 100, so 100, 102, you idiot. <laughs> and as soon as I stopped fixating on the actual number, because inevitably you count up as you go around and it starts to get in your head and you think, well, I need, I can only get one bogey in the last two holes and it gets in your head. The first time I broke 80, I didn't even know till I'd done my car. Really? You've broken 80 now? Yeah. Three good, times. Though, aren't you? So, so is the channel going to change its name from Bad Golf to... No, because Alex is still terrible. Um, <laughs> and he's, he's recently done his back in. So the next round we play, I think we're playing next week at West Middlesex. He's going to be in real trouble. I'm going to absolutely batter him. <laughs> but we have a system now whereby he starts with a shot. If he wins the hole, he loses it. 
if he loses the hole, he keeps the shot. I can never get a shot. It's called the Sunningdale system. It's like this floating shot. It's a really good way of playing if you're of different abilities. It's something you've worked out to play with a terrible golfer. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. Well, well, I remember, I think at one point you said, I just want to be able to break like 90, let's say, and I'll be happy. What realistically now is, you must be thinking single figures. Well, no, because I think something every sort of club amateur golfer knows when you get good, you start to lose shots on holes and it becomes quite stressful because I play the same course most of the time, apart from when I'm playing with Alex. And you get used to, uh, you, you get used to going uh, like four for three, five for three, yeah. and then suddenly it's like four for two, f- you know, three for one or whatever, and you, <laughs> three you miss, <laughs> not three for one. <laughs> but I play against people who, who will get five points for a par if yeah. you're playing Stableford, which most people do. And you think, I, I can't get five points. It's impossible. That was you back in the day, yeah, but I sort of want to. I want my shots back. <laughs> you spent months obsessed with getting better, and I want to get worse again. Well, it's interesting because you have to stop thinking about stable foot, and you have to focus on yes. gross score. Yeah. Because you know, I've I've played with people who've had two foot putts for five points, and missed them, but had them because if they're sort of got a birdie putt on a mm. par five. Um, but I think the goal is now just to. You can. I, I can now know what I'm doing wrong, yeah. which is massive, as opposed to just, as a lot of you will know, you just think, I just can't play golf. I'm a complete idiot. Whereas now I think, <laughs> well, I know what I need to get sorted, so I'll go and see my, my pro, Duncan, who's a legend. <laughs> well, he, uh, you fixed my slice also. Thank you. One of the big things credit. that started it, we played a charity golf competition, which wasn't filmed. You that was rate, yeah. weird. Where the so John played with us that. If we talked about it in the podcast when we got the cheated, cheating one, where there was a cheat. We got cheated out of we win, well, not winning. We weren't going to win, were we? But no, but some some are definitely cheated. Like it big was time cheat. Yeah, a little bit cheat. of scandal. Um, but well, we were stood on like the twelfth tee, and I was the first <laughs> three holes. I was actually very embarrassed. I was starting to go red and thinking, "Oh my god, <laughs> you're having you go the most ahead. embarrassing round of your life in front of Rick and Guy." And then I got better, and I was fine. I calmed down, but. In about, I would say, 90 seconds, you fixed my slice. Yeah. It was remarkable. You said, there's five things you need to do. Uh, Strengthen your grip. Uh, Imagine the club head pointing at the ball as it goes back. Align your shoulder up, and suddenly my slice is gone. I thought, oh, wow. I didn't need to spend 300 quid on a new club. I didn't... Did we ever invoice him for this lesson, actually? (laughs) Good point, we've not. (laughs) That's on me. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Thank you very much. No, that's that's on no, that's, <laughs> no, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, John, I think you, your progress has been phenomenal. Thank uh, you thanks very so much. much for coming part of the show. You're and welcome. Before we uh, we get you to leave, we are going to get you to pick a name from the audience because at the end of the show, every guest and me and Guy yes. are going to participate in a challenge, and you could win a phenomenal it is prize, sick. like ridiculous. So. Really good. I don't know if you want John taking your shot or not, but that <laughs> is just what and it is. And the other point, John's left-handed. He's going to do this challenge right-handed, isn't he? Oh, did you not bring your left-handed club? I didn't want to walk through Salford at <laughs> nine in the evening it? on it fight night time. with a, a golf club in my hand. There we go. Wow. This was a... Uh, I mean, I'm not saying Salford's rough, but anyone walking through a city centre with a golf club is cause for concern. This was a an ice bucket that we ordered on Amazon yesterday. Oh, nice! So yeah. Okay, so I'm no picking my partner. Spared. You're picking somebody in the audience. Everyone's name is in the audience, bar mine and guys, family and friends. I'm really sorry about that. And Terms and conditions apply. And if your name gets picked, shout out, and then John will be playing for you at the end of the show. Okay. Well, I'll pick it left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got it. Yes. Where is it's it? written in the stars, isn't it, mate? <laughs> uh, stall tier. Which is this one, is it? Yeah, row A, number 29. <laughs> nice. What's your name? Hello, mate. What's your name? Tom. Hello, Tom. So remember, John, you're playing for Tom. I'm playing for Tom. Hashtag Tom. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, thanks for Thank this. Thank you very much, <laughs> Rick. Appreciate it. Give thanks a round of applause. Legend, Thank thanks, you. mate. You can stay there for dear Rick.
So one of my favourite parts of the podcast is Dear Rick. I like it for a number of reasons. I like listening to Rick's advice. It's not always great. Wow. But I also like how, which you might not, if you don't watch the podcast, you won't see this. If you listen to it, you might kind of, you will, you'll miss it. He always shuts his eyes and gets really kind of... I get really into he this. He goes really kind of zen, starts listening, then gives some rubbish answer. But... <sighs> okay, go on. There's a lot, I'm going to have to do it on my phone, because weirdly, the text's tiny on my laptop. So I'm going to go off my phone. Okay. Quite a long Hit one, me. and it's okay. about a child. So you need to give oh, there's no, good advice. Oh, there's no tricky words for you in this email. <laughs> <laughs> delusional. Don't get all right. delusional about this. Very good. I can say it now, delusional. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, delusional. Right, you ready? Okay. Okay, dear ready. Rick. Hey guys, I'm a newcomer to your shows and was introduced to your YouTube videos and podcast by my son, Ben. Okay, nice. He suggested listening to them on a five hour journey to St. Andrews from Manchester in August for his birthday. Wow, that's dedication. And we really enjoy them, so thanks for that. Okay. It turned out we were there the same week as you when we were buying the second hand clubs from the shops. Oh yeah. But they missed us. I'm working my way through your back catalogue and really enjoying it. I'm writing to seek your advice for Ben, who is 12 and he's really into golf. Okay. He regularly plays and has lessons at Motram Hall under a great and very patient in brackets coach. We've recently been discussing career paths with him and he's expressed a desire to get into the golf course design. Ooh. I always assumed that this vocation was largely um, the preserve of former and current pros and wanted your, your advice on whether I should encourage his interest and if so, how do we break into this world? I think in an ideal world, he'd like to play golf for a living but think he realises it's possibly obviously a stretch to do that uh, he's quite strong academically and we want to give him a focus because he can be a lazy sod and he okay. gets that from me like, like most 12 year olds yes. I guess um, if not the golf course design area then what other career paths within this sport would you recommend all right but before you answer it the final line will be at your live show at the Lowry wow. and we're really looking forward to seeing you both so I text Chris today his number's on the email okay. and Chris is here with Ben. So we have the lights up and can we see them? And then Rick, you've got to give the best possible advice to, to Chris are. and to young Ben. Wow, so Chris this is and Ben, where are you? Doing it actually to their face. Oh, there they are. There they are. Hey. Chris and Ben. Very good. So no pressure, Rick. This is no pressure. I, can, I, can I go down there and can I go and like, I feel like I want to do it like more in person. I'm not sure if the mic's going to work. Hello, 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 hello. Um, well, it's almost, I should really actually ask my mum up there because when I was a kind of 11 or 12 is when I kind of got into golf. Nice to meet you. Hi. Good to see you. Are you well? Hi. Can I sit here? Is anyone sit here? <laughs> so for me... I'll just stay here. <laughs> so for, we're not filming this, are we? Um, so for me, I remember when I was like 11, 12, similar to you, and I started playing golf. And for me, I always wanted to be a tour player. Realised pretty early on, I wasn't very good. But it was very difficult because I still wanted a career in golf. Like I really wanted to put golf shoes on every day and call it my job. I think golf course architect is like ridiculously amazing. I'd love to get into that. And as a 12 year old, that's what you want to look into getting into. That's really amazing. I think for me, enjoy your golf as much as you can when you're young because it's when you start to get a bit old and other things start to come in. You don't enjoy it as much, typically. Enjoy it as much as you can. Get as good as you can and learn from as many people as you can. So like speak to career advisors or course designers, like course architects. We know the guy who designed JCB, uh, Andy Heisman, 100% I can link you up with him. Have a chat to him, see how he got into golf course architects because he designed one of the best golf courses I've ever played. So I think something like that, follow your dreams, work hard. And even if you don't play professionally, I think golf course architecture would be amazing. I'd love to get into that. Should we do one together? <laughs> what um loads of room left on all of yeah. us <laughs> well this is that the stage it looks pretty good it, from back here what um what should what would you do as the opening hole um not sure if this will pick up on but i'll tell you par five maybe pa i like nice. par five opening hole dog leg left <laughs> hard dog leg left yeah <laughs> um little water feature at the front so it's like risk and reward yeah like a stream at the front perfect and we'll call it Ben's Alley. Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Guys, let's meet you both.
Well, that's the kind of advice you can expect if you ask Rick for some, uh, some advice on Dear Rick. But if any of you guys want to feature on the next podcast, the email's podcastofrickshields.com. We always want more Dear Ricks. That's the kind of quality you'll get. Hey, it's quite nice, that, though. Um, should we get our next guest on the podcast? I think we should. Now, she is no stranger at all to speaking in front of lots of people and playing in front of lots of people. Yes. She's been on the guest a few times. <laughs> Do you want to give it away? <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Sophie, Sophie Walker. Walker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Hope you're all right. Yeah. I'll see you. Hello. Hello. Feel free to take a seat. Hi, everybody. This is cool, isn't it? That was a good hand there, Phil. Hello. <laughs> I actually, believe it or not, I actually went to school with that boy. That boy? Jamie Runciman. We used to hang around. I still see myself as a boy. We used to hang around. We won't say all the things that we used to do. You know do. who's coming? No. Don't say any stories. Oh, no, you've got stories, please. You've, That's five minutes at the end. You've got far Rick too hard. many stories on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm glad he waved at you. How are you, Sophie? You're good? Yeah, I'm good. This is great. It's cool, isn't it? Well done so far, lads. Thank, Thank you. you. It's coming together quite nicely. I think we're weirdly... Very on, like contract schedule. We're kind of ahead of time. Like Let's chill out. Let's slow it down. Let's <laughs> chill out. Um, you have been super busy this year, here, there and everywhere. You've been travelling, you've been on TV loads. Which part of your job now, obviously you moved more into like media, do you enjoy the most? Oh, um, I absolutely loved covering the Solheim Cup. Yeah. Um, it's something that I watched loads as a kid. Obviously I really wanted to play in it, didn't. And I've loved it for ages and now I'm getting people coming up to me going, how good was the Solheim Cup? And yeah. like, thanks to you guys as well for you know, publicising women's golf a bit more and hopefully some of you in the audience and people listening at home might have thought, yeah, I'm going to turn on the Solheim and watch it. So I've really enjoyed kind of sharing players' stories. I know how good they are. Yeah. But, but now it's like, look, look everybody, Emily Pedersen, like how amazing is that? So and good. So that's what I've, I've really enjoyed this year and being able to travel a little bit more because my whole life was on aeroplanes and during COVID times that was non-existent. So it is nice to get out and about. Do you like miss the really intense like schedule when you were a player? I miss not knowing my schedule. It's like January the 7th, the schedule had come out for the entire year and I knew exactly what I was doing, yeah. where I was going to be. So I'm quite organised like that. So it, it's quite worrying sometimes as a freelancer, mm. not knowing what, what's coming up. But then it can be exciting as well, can't it? Yeah, well, it's, like, it's a bit more unpredictable. And obviously you're coaching now, mm -hmm. you're presenting, you want a car I the did. other day. Yeah, please tell this story, this yeah. is sick. <laughs> Rick's not the only one that won a tournament at JCB. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring my trophy. Did you have more than seven people in the tournament, though? <laughs> uh, yeah, just. Not that much more. <laughs> uh, there, there was a, a pro-am at JCB this week. Um, and it, it's golf day. We have been playing in for ages. And it was a thrifty car rental. And, and the winner... The winner won, won a car, and on Tuesday, the weather was so bad. I don't know if any of you dared play in that, but I was thinking to myself, come on, so if you don't, have, don't get to play golf much anymore, you're going to enjoy this. And at the point where my knickers were wet, I oh. thought, <laughs> what am wow. I doing? That is what <laughs> <laughs> no? I'm not even, even going to comment. JCB does have like, strange effects on people, <laughs> I'll tell you that. There's no, like, normal comments come out of that, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> So it's raining. Oh, so it's raining. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it was one of those where we actually thought about coming in, but the uh, two, there were the four of us and two guys we were playing with had never played the 17th hole at JCB Club. And you've all watched the videos, and those of you lucky to play it, can you imagine going to the JCB Club and somebody saying, how was 17? Yeah, yeah, you you're not like, oh, I didn't it. play it. So we, we did, we, we carried on, and, and thankfully I did, because I ended up, ended up winning. Very good, ten, well done. Ten footer on the last. Get and a you get a car, do you know what car you're going to get? Well, there's not many cars available at the moment. Ah. So they've said, um, can you give us a couple of months to try Imagine and find Imagine they told one. you like a start date. Like you can have your car from like tomorrow yeah. for a year, but everything's on like two year backlog. And so it is, it's, it's shocking isn't it with cars at the minute, but I, I'm going away to uh, cover some ladies European tour the next couple of months. So I don't need it till December time. <laughs> <laughs> and what's like obviously you work at like the mercedes-benz garage as well so like you've yeah. got to rock up in non-mercedes-benz i know can you imagine if i rocked up with a bmw parked yeah. it right at the front 
Um, now, obviously, not only are you presenter on TV, winning cars here, there, and everywhere, you also review equipment. One of the best on YouTube, may I add? What? what <laughs> one of the best on YouTube. <laughs> we do all right on this table yeah. for club reviews. Yeah, you do. Um, I think it'd be worth having a little back and forth about yeah. what you think has been the best golf clubs that have come out this year. Yeah, I've actually got my phone for notes. You've got a list. That. Yeah. Um, Where should we start first? Are we going right through the bag? Yeah, we've got or is anything that, anything that stands out that you think has been really good? Because you've tested, I, I guess, everything really. Yeah, yeah. I would say probably, can you call it the big four? I'm probably Let's more of an expert on, on the big four. So uh, with what's the big four then? In my opinion, yeah, uh, Ping, Titleist, TaylorMade, Callaway. I think Cobra do a good job and so do Mizuno as well out there. But I would put those four kind of... Cobra are like Tottenham. You know, like now, because I know my football life. Looks footy, doesn't he? You know, like, now I like my footy and stuff. Beer footy. He's all right. I think Cobra are better than Tottenham. Beer footy, big tattoo coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> but they are like, they're like fifth place, sixth place most of the time, aren't they? Like an Arsenal, maybe. Yeah. Look at you. We're having a go at Southerners, because we're up in Manchester. Um, I know there's lots of Southerners. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go, let's go the least kind of sexy club, Putter. Putter. Um, I as a kid was always the blade putter. If you used a mallet or a two ball, I was like, you can't put. That's the way that I used to think. Yeah. I, yeah, well, <laughs> hold, hold the applause, because I've gone it's to changed. a two ball. <laughs> and you know what? It's, I can't believe I'm well on putting with it. Is yeah. that the OG one or one of the ones, the new ones? It's the new one, but it's just like- Like a 10? No, it's the OG, it's got the new, okay, it's got yeah. the, the, the What's the fancy the shaft red I've got in it? Yeah, oh, the yeah, the ones. stroke lab. <laughs> uh, stroke, stroke lab, lab. yeah. It, brilliant. Absolutely love it. Whereas 15, 20 years ago, when they, well, 20 years ago when they came out, I was like, absolutely really? See, I, When they came out 20 years ago, oh, it was I, the best I ever. Thought it was class. Well, this is the thing. I went into a golf shop on my 16th birthday. My dad says, you, you can have a putter for your 16th birthday. And I tried out the two ball, hold everything. <laughs> but Tiger Woods had a Scotty Cameron. Very true. Yeah. So I've got the Scotty Cameron. <laughs> have, you, have you ever bought into Scotty Cameron's? Have you got Scotty Cameron's that you have collect? Um, I've I've just got that one, that thirty-two dotter that is still pristine. Is that a black one of the black ones? Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Is that worth a bit? I don't know. I don't think I sell it. They re-released them, but they don't look quite as good. Right. The new ones, do they? I yeah. think the Trillium ones. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got an old one that I had refurbished, which is amazing, mm. and I've got a few extra ones that I bought recently. But I do fancy like something quite like piece of art, aren't they? Really, yeah, Scotty's and stuff. Jewelry, aren't they? Yeah. But they're not like. You know, they're so expensive, it's ridiculous. And then wedges, wedges. where are we going wedges? Uh, Vokis, for yeah. me. Um, I tell you what, I did quite like the, the Callaway Jaws. We tried we've them not, yet. No, they don't send, they've not sent them to us. Oh. You must have, oh, you got the shipment. Because we didn't get, the, we <laughs> didn't get any box from Callaway. No, actually, I think we did. I, hope we did. Yeah, I think yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just didn't bother reviewing them. No, I, I really... <laughs> <laughs> they're still in a box somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they don't pay you enough. Um, he doesn't get paid to review them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you all start. start. Um, yeah, the jaws were, were you know, when you, you, you like rub the, the face and you can feel the friction and yeah. all that. Like, I quite like that. And they were high toe. I don't know if anyone's tried I high hate, toe. How do you like high it, toe? It takes you a while to get your head around it to frame the golf ball. Um, mm. But I felt like Phil Mickelson's, and I'm not the best um, lob shot player in the world, and I could use them. So me neither. I'm all about me. That. Yeah. I need a chipper. Are we doing chippers on? No. <laughs> no, no. So yeah, Vokey SMAs, they're in the bag. Yeah. They're my favourites. But Jaws were pretty good as well. Yeah, I think I think Vokey's this year. Well, they're not even that new actually. I did to be honest. They're the, the last, last years, but they're still the best. And then irons. Where are you going to go with irons? Oh, where you could go everywhere with irons, couldn't yeah. you? I think um, the manufacturers now they make one for every handicap don't they yeah. it's like it's crazy um i like apex as a range i think they do that really well um and i think for a mid handicapper i think the new dcbs that have come in i think it's nice that manufacturers are putting a forged iron to a higher handicapper because sometimes it's like oh well if you're a higher handicapper you're not going to spend as much money yeah and you don't need the feel but it's nice to have that are you getting paid by callaway no. <laughs> Odyssey? Anyone, anyone? Odyssey. Jaws. <laughs> yeah. Apex. Um, P790s, I think. I was just sure that it's the tailor made No, but like P790s are just. Th th I'd, I would advise you all to get custom fit, but I, I, they're the type of iron that you really could just rock up into a, a shop and, and just yeah. buy them off the shelf. So I think they custom do that. Custom fit quite at well. American Golf? Or. Uh, uh, <sighs> I was going to go with Yannick's. Is, is, <laughs> yeah. is the CEO of American Golf is not here, is he? 
Yeah. Is he here? CEO? No, good. He might be ringing me again. Right. You'd only get you one percent of that, wouldn't you? What's that? You'd only get one percent of selling a tailor made, is it? Tell, yeah, I didn't sell tailor made. If he came in, it was Nicholas all day long. Nicholas all deep red. <laughs> be my guest. <laughs> um, top, top tips then. A little segue mm -hmm. for fitting. What do you, what do you, if you're going for a fitting, what should be the three questions that somebody should ask? Um, I think, I think looks come more into it than you actually appreciate. Um, you've got to really like the look of it. And I think if you do like the look of it, it helps you perform that little bit better. Yeah. So um, that, that would be one for me. Take your own clubs. Um, that would definitely be one um, because you might think you're hitting, you set this seven iron really well, but then you put your seven iron in and it's like, oh, it's going ex exactly the same. So yeah. uh, probably be a you bit- You think hit your clubs after you've been fitted as well, I think? Yeah, t yeah take them with, because you're going to be warming up. You're probably going to warm up with your clubs. And if I hit a seven iron warming up, might go 135 yards, 137. Once I start getting warmed up on 145, you don't want to be 145 with the club yeah. you're trying. Yeah, exactly. So just be careful of that. Don't hit too many golf balls because you get tired. Yeah. Um, I think that's one. And I, I don't get this with fitting. And I, well, I do because it's price sensitive and everything, but they only give you a seven iron. And I think, right, I so that. for instance, you might go, oh, those, um, I don't know, pick, pick any iron, I don't know, a, a sim. Oh, they're great at the seven iron. You might get it in a wedge and it looks like a shovel. Yeah. Or the other way where you might look at, like I tried the T200, it's a tight list. And there's a seven iron. I was like, oh yeah, they're nice. Looked at the four iron and I just couldn't play it. Well, yeah. Even like you said, it's, it's looks, but it's also, what's that pitching wedge like to chip around the green? I know again, yeah, you can't can be a get bit that fiery, in real can't fitting, it? but you don't just hit a seven iron every round you play. You do have those little pitching wedges off the side of your own, little nine yeah, iron. But I don't know how we can fix that because obviously it's the manufacturer. But if fitting is that important, surely the brand should be trying to fix it, shouldn't they? You'd think yeah. like, yeah. Well, yeah. you know. should have enough sets to be able to like, even just a demo set, set together, exactly. Even just a random regular steel demo set, and it's not ideal. But then, if you're if you got fitted for stiff Project X, at least a regular eight iron, you can at least well, get make, some make feel them all for it. We'll take all the shafts yeah. out. Like, and, and Robert Rock now. Um, gave a really good piece of advice. He said that he felt he swung his driver three mile an hour faster on a driving range or in a fitting compared to when he was on the golf course because yeah, he plays stuff, yeah, yeah. a little bit safer. So you might get fitted for a shaft which is too stiff for you and then you get on the golf course and it is not the same. So if you can, you remember back in the day you used to go in the pro shop and borrow one for two yeah, weeks. Yeah, of course. That was way better, wasn't it? Yeah, it just yeah. stuck loads of tape doesn't on it. Anymore, doesn't does happen it? anymore, does it? So. Okay. okay, driver. Driver, um, TSI three. Really? Oh, no, I, I hate it. Disagree. Sorry if anyone's that. got a TSI three. That is a that wow, how, you love it so much. Yeah, it's it's added considerable yardage really? to my yeah, with ball speed and noticeably over everything else. So, uh, anyway. it, but I know a lot of on? people. You know what's mad? When I was growing up, I used to love the Titleist drivers, the real pur shape. Yes. Mm -hmm. But now look at TSI three; it looks too much like that. I almost can't. What, what I remember when we first saw it was like that looks like an old Titleist driver. It's good. Yeah, but then, but then it didn't kind of perform or feel that amazingly. Superb. See, I've gone with the G twenty G four twenty five Max, and it's just so big. Still can't really I think it, Ping are um, boring technology chat. They do this thing; it's called spin consistency, and I don't. It's a random name, but it makes your spin numbers more together, be it on mm. a good and a bad one. Yeah. Which makes me, which why I really like the driver in that. I am pretty straight with the driver, so it's not big an issue. But with the fairway woods and the hybrids. That's really helped me. Um, I haven't found a hybrid that gets anywhere near a G425. Anywhere yeah, near. Really. I tried the Titleist one out the other day, been custom fit for it, like you have to with Titleist, and I just couldn't get anything as good. No, it's mad. I was just thinking here, sat here, trying to selfie. We've never done a video together. No. Bar on the podcast. Nope. What video idea could we do? Oh, I don't know. I'll open it up. What video idea could. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Me teaching Sophie. Yeah. Is that James again. <laughs> Has he got a mic? I'm, up there? I'm really good at bump and runs. Just the lob shot. I'm not not great at. But like, would there be like a fun like challenge or something we could do, or you know, holding one challenge at JCB? 
We've got, we've got one of the JCB guys here, so I'm sure... We both sponsor. like JCB, don't we? Sponsored by JCB. Um, yeah, we yeah, need th- to do something. Let's have I, a think. I think a fun challenge would be, would be yeah. really, really good, where it's like you versus me, or in, in a mad different style, or... Break join, 85. Join, join, <laughs> I'll join you on a break 85. <laughs> <laughs> or like join me on a break 75 or something coming back yeah, next year let's and do stuff. It. I think that, that, that'd be like a really good way of doing it. Um, yeah, we need to do a video together, definitely. 100%. I think so. Were there any other clubs we missed or anything? What, what's, what's like your favourite? Go on. I was going to say, what was your favourite? So I'm going to go, well, it's pretty much what I've got in the bag. Yeah. Love even roll putters. Yep. I I'm, kind of don't know why. It's like, I, I seem to always go back to it. It's just very beige though. Yeah. It's very, it doesn't offend me, but it doesn't. It's got a red and white head cover. Mm-hmm. Matches my logo. Um, but like, yeah, I like, I, I do like an even roll putter. I've got SM8 wedges now. And then I'm actually really toying with different ideas, irons at the moment. But as a, as a generalization, P790s, I do think are the best irons probably ever I made. wish I'd gone P790s. I yeah. thought I was better than I was and went yeah. P770s and then went down the bag with the wedges and the MBs and they look great, but I can't hit them. <laughs> <They are laughs> That's good. another thing. Like, make sure you can hit them on a rainy day in Manchester, not Correct. just a beautiful sunny day when the turf's fantastic or you're off a mat. Exactly. Um, which I found out. And then for me, probably the best driver is G425. It, any of the range, Max, LS Tech, I think they've been classed this I year. I recommend, that's the one I recommend to people, yeah. I've got to say. Um, but as I say, I needed a little bit more length to my driver rather than accuracy, so. Yeah, no, I think it's good. Right, let's get, you're picking a name out of the hat. I think out of all the guests we've got on, Right. Bar maybe Mr. Robinson. He's pretty good. I'd yeah. want you on, on my team, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Young guy. And then we're going to get you out with a mic and do a QA. Yeah. I'm going to be t- taking the questions and answering them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, should I've we do it then first? Answering. Yeah, go on then. And then, so, Tom, John's playing for Tom. John and Tom. Sophie's going to play for. Who's this going to be? There you go. Got it. tier. Wow, that's a popular tier. Is it? tier's the one. B31. B31. Is it in that corner again? Have you not no that? way. I've shook him up. What's your name? <laughs> Sophie, you're playing for Mark. Right. <laughs> I'll leave that one out. You can say that one so okay. we don't forget. Keep that one. Thank you, Sophie. We'll get you back on for the challenge later, but if you can grab a side mic, head out. If you've got a question, stick your hand up. Sophie's going to come round and we're going to answer quick fire. Some. Standing or seating? I don't know. I was trying to cool down. I'm bloody hot. <laughs> it's really hot. Which, oh, which way are you going? I'm going at the front straight away. Oh, wow. You look like you've played golf today. What did you shoot? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played today? It is an interesting thing what to wear to a golf podcast, isn't it? Like a lot, of, like what do you wear? Do you wear a bit of a shirt? Yeah, I like it. Stand, yeah, I like safe. it. Nice. Why not, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you weren't working in golf, what do you think that you would be doing? It's a great question. Um, Footballer. <laughs> Footballer. <laughs> yeah, that never worked as well. Well, weirdly, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Just yeah, did want to be an electrician, then realised no, that's probably not. I don't know. I came out of school with two. I think I might have said this before. I came out of school with drama. Did all right in drama and did all right in PE. And I've kind of gelled them together a little bit. I was never good at maths, hence why I can't add up on a golf course. But bar that, it's yeah. I never really want. Probably once I got to about eleven, I started playing golf, and I got okay to about sixteen. It was like. No, I think I've got to go down the golf route. Similar thing for me, really. I ended up working up a, a pro shop when I was at college, like 16. So I've kind of never not really worked in golf. But I reckon probably like sales for me. Like, wait, what about when you were like 11, 12? I wanted to be a golfer. I thought I was, yeah. I was like off probably 18 and thought I was really good. And obviously in hindsight, I wasn't. But I think what's mad, we've said this before on the podcast, but there is so many jobs in golf um, that I, I do think, and it's not really answering the question, I always think I was kind of destined to work in golf, but I also think if I hadn't done, probably like sales, I'm not quite sure selling what, uh, probably golf insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a commission. Yes. Well, like you can say, like different jobs, like Ben was talking about before, like golf architects and stuff. It's I mad know. how many jobs like, you can get into now, really. 
Yes, Sophie. We're moving on. Another hand in the air. Anybody want to ask a question? Oh, you would have to. Oh, you're close. I'm going to go with you. Uh, if you were to pick any golf brand, what would you be sponsored by? Ooh. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I've had every contract. The one that pays the most. Yeah. Um, well, to, to be honest, like I, again, I've probably mentioned before, like literally, I can't think of a brand that have not offered to, to sponsor full full sponsorship. Links. Links didn't, yeah, <laughs> didn't. Um, pretty much every brand has put an offer on the table at some point, but you know, for me, it's, I, I don't, I would never do it because it's, I'm saying this now in front of a lot of people live <laughs> and recorded. I'll never do it unless, <laughs> um, but for me, because I review equipment stuff, but if I was, if you re if I had to go through the bag with everything, tight I think that's probably the best. Long, it? If you had to go through the bag with literally everything, it'd probably be tight list because yeah, you've got from top to tail, by the driver. Weirdly though, something. even though Scotty Cameron's are obviously class, I feel like I wouldn't really want to use, I don't feel, I want something a bit like, I know they do stable putters, but I think I would go tight list. Balls are class wedges, obviously. Not as keen on the drivers currently, but irons are getting good yeah. irons. There's not many brands that don't do good everything. I feel like there's no gimmicks with them either, but. No, that's true. Next question, there's somebody over here. Uh, you recently did a video where somebody got hit by a golf buggy. <laughs> <laughs> That well, was, once, once that we was paid the insurance, and once, <laughs> once, he, once he talked to our lawyers. Did, did you see it live or not? I can't remember. No, because I was hitting the shot. So, yeah, you were hitting the shot like... So you, you were hitting the shot like that way, let's I say, was. and the guy was here, and I was watching it there. Well, luckily, we had Matt and Harry on the camera, and... Uh, oh, it's the funniest thing. And I, I just hit the shot and hit a pretty good <laughs> shot. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> hit a pretty good shot, and uh, I turn around, and I just like hear this commotion, and the guy's like... Like, like, it was bad it, actually. It was like a really awkward one as well because they were on a different hole and we couldn't exactly like go over to him because it was they were they were embarrassed, weren't they? Really? As well, well, it was his. I don't know if we said it was the lad's dad as well. <laughs> he nailed his own dad. <laughs> yeah, it was son driving the buggy and then dad. Well, I think over. the dad was pissed off, but they were both gawping at you, weren't they? Yeah. So they, they couldn't really blame me. It was both their fault, really. It was my fault. It basically. was your fault. But that yeah, was good. no. <laughs> What's mad is how many people have said, is it like set up? Like you can't set that, like really. So it's, uh, I'm glad we got it on camera. So af after nine, um, we, we'd already finished filming then and we, w we stopped at them for the halfway house and said, um, by the way, we've got this footage. Can we use it? <laughs> Can we use it? Do you mind if we use it? And he said, absolutely. We've only come here today to play because of you. So I was like, great. I thought that's a bit of a souvenir to go on with it, <laughs> isn't it? Like, if you didn't get a selfie, you got for the bruised ass. That was, yeah. And, um, and this was really funny as well. Do you remember what you said after? He said, even if I die tonight, make sure you still use yeah. the content. <laughs> <laughs> that's how bad it was. And I was like, that's dedication. That, yeah. is, that is impressive. But yeah, he's all right. I should have I got an address and sent him something. It's not your fault though. His son nailed him. I know, but we got, <laughs> we got, we got shed loads of views on YouTube though. That's true. <laughs> We should have sent him something because that earned a lot of money on ad revenue. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got yourself? another question here. Uh, what's your best tip to hit my drive 12 yards further? <laughs> <laughs> Play with a short hitter. You've been paying <laughs> and you that. appear to be longer. Have we, ever, have we ever said the full, full story of this? I think we have, yeah. That I outdrive you regularly. But the Harry bit. Go on, like, yeah, we have, but tell it again if you want. So we're at Formby Hall, we've done some filming. And um, I'm a big hitter. Guy was a big hitter. I, don't, I wish sometimes I wish I wasn't so long. It does me head in, but <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> uh, we're not going to start talking about little guy, are we? <laughs> no, well, that's that's not. Big <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, big guy. Um, yeah, we're Formby Hall. We've just done filming. We went and played a few holes. Harry joined us, one of our cameramen who's here right now, and. Uh, he borrowed some clubs. I think you had your clubs. No, no, no. I borrowed one. You borrowed my clubs as well. I borrowed it. It was the first sim. Never hit it before either. It's like a pro shop out the back of my car. Yeah. These guys are just getting what they wanted. And I obviously must have chosen the wrong shaft or the wrong, the wrong lofty club or something. Something was wrong with my driver, basically. And uh, I hit a drive and I thought, I've crushed that. That's pretty good. You hit it well. Guy steps up, knocks it past me. I'm like, what the hell? My drive must have been broke. Well, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to drive it by too much because it looks like a flute. If it's like 30 yards now, oh, that's a flute. You've hit a sprinkler head or something. So I thought, I'll outdrive Rick here and I'll go on about forever, but I'll do it like a good distance that's not too much. You so I thought 12 on. yards was a good amount. And then Harry, who literally, what do you play off, Harry? 
18, steps up, knocks it 12 yards past Guy comfortably. So what was more embarrassing, it was 24 yards past me. Well, what's funny, there's four, there's two, us two here, obviously, and there's two guys off stage who, who obviously work for Rick, and you are officially the shortest hitter. Luckily, Tim, one of our other editors, is Tim in the crowd? Yeah. <laughs> He's left handed and doesn't play golf, and I hit it past him. Yeah. So I'm not the shortest. Um, what's, what's that? I'm reaching a little yeah. bit. Right. Any more qu questions, self? Rick, guy, I'm up here now. Where are you? I've oh, got you. Up yeah. There. Can't see up there as well, yeah. I know. Wow. Getting my steps up. Another question. Do you still play at Art Common, Rick? <laughs> um, no, I still play at Art Common. I've got my name on the junior captain board, and I've done second place um, club championship. <laughs> <laughs> I am still a member there, and my mum, who's also in the crowd, was lady captain there. And it was, uh, it's not far from me, and I go and use the practice ground and you definitely sound like you live round there. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So what at the front? Can you just say it loud so we don't have to? Yeah. So I've just got a handicap of 17. I'm at the minute now where I'm like, I've got an oversized cavity iron. I think I could lose some shots by these sides of my hand. So maybe going for a forward sign. Mm -hmm. At what point would you recommend to go from an oversized cavity to a forward sign? I love, I love how you talk with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Got forged iron. Got <laughs> <laughs> over. <laughs> what, what, do you want to take this one? Um, I, well, I don't think there is a set time. The only thing you lose, I would say, with one of those style irons is they don't always look as good. They're obviously stronger in loft, typically, so they can come out a bit flatter and, and lose spin. And, and the other thing, I sometimes it's uh, your kind of handicap. If you go for like an iron that you like the look of more. Might not necessarily improve your golf straight away. You might want to practice more and go to the range. Or sometimes if it's cold in the wind, you think, I can't be asking in the range. But we've got a new set of irons, think, no, we'll go on at 50 balls. Yeah. And that is what will actually get you better at golf, probably rather than the iron. But around that handicap, I think you can probably move into something smaller. I've always, one thing that I always love to do is almost set a target that you're trying to achieve to and then reward yourself with something new. Like try and set a benchmark for like, by the end of this year, I'm going to get shoot a certain score or I'm going to practice for three hours a week before the end of the uh, three hours per week till the end of the year and almost reward yourself off mm. the back of it rather than just going out buying it and then just kind of expect them to work for you kind of feel like you're earning it and then that way you're going to work a lot harder for it as well have you got anything in mind any irons that you like I, I tried the pin 425 yeah yeah they're still a bit big though I'd say. And some of my irons. Yeah. yeah maybe Maybe like a set of P790s though, like maybe get like last generation or some yeah. of like golf bidder or something, because they... It was either pings or the, the same oversized and neither was... Yeah, they're probably too close, because what have you got now? The oversized Oh yes, yeah. so the, the Sims is the new model basically, yeah. so it's not going to really feel different. different. Yeah. yeah, so I'd go like some like a P790 maybe, because they will kind of last you, and if you get into like single figures and low singles, it could still work. Yeah. Let's go last few questions, so where are you these days? I'm still at the top here. Alex. I'm with Thomas, Alex junior Cassie, golfer. Right First of all, what's your handicap, Thomas? Well, I just got mine and it's 54. I'm playing in a comp tomorrow, so I hope I'll get it down. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's your question for the boys? So, you know that video, like the million year old video of the, uh, you know, the guy that came in with all the uh, rare and limited edition Scotty Cameron? Oh yeah. That was the one that forced me to get my own Scotty <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> or Mum. It was actually my money because I've done four. Wow. Hey. Nice. <laughs> Very good. Okay, hell, let's top. I have the new the special select Newport two. Nice. Uh, which was your favourite out of all of the ones that were there? Ooh. Um. That's a good question. Uh, I bought a couple. I bought that My Girl. You did. So I want to give that to my girls when they get older, potentially. Uh, what the other one I well, bought? there were some that weren't for sale, though. There was. There were some that you said you can film, but no money can buy these. Yeah. And they were the ones that then you want. Yeah, they were like really like limited edition. I can't think of the top of my head. Can you remind me of any, Tom? Okay. 
Ah, uh, yes, that was pretty brand new, that one, actually, wasn't it? I think the best Scotties, the rare ones, are like a simple like, Newport 2 heel toe, yes. the jet black ones, yeah. maybe even like a, a black shaft, black grip, like maybe like a white oh, alignment line, they just look pure, and a little circle T on as well. Yeah, I think anything like old that you can have it refurbished as well. But like those trillion ones as well. Yeah, I've got this trillion one that's like sick. unbelievable, it's really, really nice. And oh, right, so. Like I say, it's not, not a, a, an amazing like tool for putting, really, it's just a piece of art. But yeah. A tour wrap. Oh yeah, yeah. That's nice. the one. Nice. They're well, nice. Oh wow. <laughs> three, he was saying, he was saying about three. So okay, Tom, your next one is about three and a half, four grand. <laughs> so I'm not sure what you did to do to save up for that first Scotty Cameron, but keep it up. Bitcoin in it. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> Definitely. It's always Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Or you're like you, you live streaming on Twitch or something, yes. like video games or something. Are we doing one Let's more? Let's go one more, Soph. Let's do one more and come down a tier. What's your name? Josh. Josh has got the last question. Um, does any single shot stand out as the favourite shot you've ever hit in your life? On camera. Which bunker? Oh, that was sick. Yeah, I think the ditch one was pretty good. Which one was the bunker one? I got out of a bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was it? In the bunker? I can't think. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah, that was pretty sick. Yeah, that, that one was really good because I beat that scallywag Peter Finch. <laughs> um, he barred him. Yeah. It's all <laughs> I'm over. Joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. You can't make it. Um, yeah, no, I think the one out, out the trees was pretty sick uh, at Woburn and the one in the ditch was pretty awesome. What, what's amazing is like... What's amazing is they're all recovery shots. <laughs> Oh can you, uh, can you, you just burned? remind me of uh, Tiger Woods' chiffing on 16? Was I like this rogue stuff ripped. Recovery. Was, <laughs> was the Phil Mickelson out the pine straw recovery as well? I think, I think all the famous ones are recoveries. The only problem is when you have everything filmed, your good shots get recorded, yes, but your absolute terrible ones also get recorded. So the one I double hit a chip recently and that was pretty embarrassing and I've done some awesome, I've topped a three wood which was pretty horrendous and some other things so. Recovery shots, they are the best though because you're thinking I'm dead, I'm going to NR, I'm going to get a double bogey and then you hit a worldie and it's yeah. like not only have you hit a worldie but you've got back in play and the scorecard yeah. keeps going. Yeah, and if you video it it's even better, yeah. you can keep playing it and keep getting that ad revenue. Um, yeah, I think, I think that was, that was from my, my, my favourite one was that one probably from the trees at Woburn because Pete was without question the favourite going into that match and uh, took him all the way down to the 18th. I thought, I'm dead here, I'm never going to win this. He went left in the trees and played this ridiculous recovery shot. I went right into the trees and had this opening and I was like, I can't lose. I, please don't let me lose. I can't live this down. Now I don't mind losing to him. But then I still had some competitive edge, <laughs> like some competitiveness with him. And I played the shot over the trees and stiffed it. But then the, my most nerve wracking put was like a two foot put to win the match. And it was like, oh my God. Because that's the worst. Imagine if you did like a recovery shot and then you missed, the and ball. I missed it or something. It doesn't particularly go down as well. But no. yeah, I think that was my favourite one. Any others? Have I missed any? Does anyone? It was, was <laughs> thank you. And again, I'll think about our ad revenue. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody. Um, we are going to end the first half now, so you can go and get a drink. And we are going to be back at what time is it now? Nine o'clock, is it? Uh, no, it's that, that was that. We're, we're yeah, we're going to be back at pretty much nine. Five yeah. We'll go five past nine. So go and get a drink. Enjoy. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you in the second half with more guests. What do you think? Practice with a purpose. Is, with a purpose, it is, yeah. It is really essential. Yeah. Like Otherwise, I, if you just go whacking balls at the driving range, it's, it's, no, it's no point, is there really? No, like I, I, I it's fun. work at a range and you just walk past and people are just smacking balls just at the centre of the range, really. Yeah. They're not actually aiming at anything. Like, aim at something and use alignment canes. That's the biggest thing I find. Like, at a range, people just hit balls, aiming up the map. They're not actually aiming at anything where... I feel like this guy would definitely just whack balls at the range. No, the, the Irish fella, he'd definitely just be whacking balls at the... Yeah, you! What's um, having what a else? point? Um, I would say generally like breathing techniques, which is a bit random, but yeah. they get themselves ready for the shot and like calm, mind, like very uh, w like peaceful before they hear the shot. Um, they 
like do deep breathing before the shot just to get themselves like in the in the zone yeah, ready yeah. for the actual like, the shot in hand um that's a pretty big one because like if you're relaxed then generally you're moving like a faster way and yes. more rhythmical way what's really funny james texted me before the show and said am i hitting any shots in tonight's show <laughs> do we need and, to do yoga <laughs> and, and he is actually hitting one shot at the end of the show which i'll be pleased about <laughs> and he actually said, do I need to do like my yoga <laughs> warm-up? Like, I thought there like, might be a faster swing speed or something like that. There might be, there might be, <laughs> but like, you're not involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> you probably would win. You'd win that. <laughs> um, so, so being prepared, having breathing exercises, making yep. sure that you've, your body's ready and you're mentally ready. Also like on. hydration. Like yep. So many amateurs probably don't even think about drinking. Like if, if you don't drink on a golf course, yeah. <laughs> Drinking different stuff to you, mate. <laughs> but drinking water. Um, just keeping energy levels high. Like it's, it's so important. If you get dehydrated on a golf course, your concentration levels just dip massively. So generally performance is lost then. Yeah. And it's I too late to recover then once you're dehydrated. Do you almost, it sounds daft, like the things that you said are dead super relevant. Do you yeah. find it's the things that almost are not the exciting things that amateurs yeah. kind of like forget about? It's almost. like basic things that people don't think about, I, I would say. Um, like another thing like pace putting um generally like amateurs in particular like that they they're so obsessed with the line of a putt they're reading the line and they're trying to think whether it's a cup outside or two cups outside from 35 feet away it doesn't really matter does yeah, it no. like the pace is the most mm. important thing so reading a green from the side actually reading whether it's uphill downhill actually getting more information on the pace of the putt um versus the actual line of the putt. I yeah. mean, if you're a foot out with the pace, uh, a foot out with the line, but you hit it eight foot past, you're, you're eight feet away. Yeah, mm. exactly. Where if you hit it perfect pace and you're four foot out with the line, you're four foot away. So yeah. like being obsessed with the pace over long putts, like I see it all the time in amateurs, like they're just so obsessed with the line and then they hit it halfway from 35 feet. And yeah, pace, it, yeah. It is, it's, it's like, Never up, never in is like a saying that gets passed around. Yeah. Actually, like whacking it too far past it's is just like bad. completely pointless, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, at least you get a free read on the way past. I know, but it's like <laughs> sometimes you'll, you'll like race a put pine past and it might go eight foot past, but it's skimmed the hole. Yeah. And you're playing pine and you go, oh, great look here, or yeah. great put, where if you lag it to two foot to the side, but your speed was amazing. Yeah. It's like, oh, that was, yeah. That wasn't I'd rather much. be two feet out on line, but bang on with the pace yeah, exactly. all the time. Yeah. What are the top tips? Uh, I've actually put some notes here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a quick look. Um, course management, that was a massive one. Um, thinking of like maximums and minimums on every shot. So say you've got, everyone uses a Bushnell pretty much now, but say or you've got Garmin. Or a Garmin. Or a Garmin. Or a Garmin. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, play on brand at least. Can you get me one? <laughs> I'll, well, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> um, but say you've got like 160 yards, people just think of a club that goes 160 yards or maybe even a bit further than that if they hit it really well. But you've got to think whether you want to be short of it, long of it, left of it, right of it. Like yeah. it's not all about going for flags. Like in a round of golf, even when I was playing for a living, you might go for five flags out of 18 where the other ones you're thinking 10 foot left, uh, short of it, left of it, long of it, right of it. Like you, you've, you've got to think of where the fat part of the green is, where yeah. the room for error is, is like massive, you know what I mean? But also on like tee shots as well, thinking of um, like, is the miss left? Is the miss right? If you actually take a moment to stand on the tee and like uh, look at the hole and read it yeah. with your eyes, like you can kind of see, well, left is better. Like left rough sometimes is better than the middle of the fairway. Yeah, of course. To, to suit a right flag, you know yeah, what I mean? I like, so I like left rough. You like left rough? <laughs> I, like I know, rough I've, I've, I've course. seen Literally, it. Actually, yeah, I don't find the fairway that often. <laughs> um, here's, a, here's a quick question. I'm going to come on to your yep. points again in a minute. After the videos, yep. a lot of people were telling you to go back on tour. Yeah. Or were saying, James should go back on tour. Was there any like outrageous offers that you got? Was there anyone that, did anyone like email you go, I'm the king of bloody wherever, <laughs> Singapore. I want to fund your, a lot. fund your journey. Well, I, I would say like, but, uh, like I got offered a lot of money at times to, to go back on tour, but it's just not something I want to do anymore. No. It's just, no, with Aww. the family, got little boy, and then got another one on the way. Oh, Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Um, I just couldn't think of anything worse than leaving them right now, so that's uh, that's why my decision swayed me. Wait till you have three, and then you'll be like, "Yeah, then I'll go back Actually, on tour." <laughs> 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 when they when they grow up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like God, I'll get out. I'll get out of here. That was another thing, though, off the back of the podcast and the videos. Didn't you get like a few more clients as well coming? Yeah, that definitely. Seen the videos I mean, and stuff. Rick did a massive shout out for my Instagram followers. I went from like two and a half thousand and went over twenty thousand the other day. So nice. Thanks nice. for that, mate. <laughs> Did we invoice it? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> solid. No, he's uh, no, it's it, it's done really well for obviously me. So hey, listen, the video did uh, really, really well for me. So don't worry, it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's fine. You, you can have those Instagram followers. <laughs> um, no, I think like I say, it was amazing. So any any last kind of points or anything that um, you feel is lacking from amateurs? N- knowing like exactly how far you hit every club, like yeah. carry numbers. Like most people come in and. Like certainly for lessons and they're talking and saying like oh I hit nine iron 150 yeah but then I've got like the state of the art launch monitor and they're hitting yeah. it and you're thinking like I've got a funny you- feeling <laughs> I've got a funny feeling your seven iron would go a long way how, long, how far do you hit your seven iron no you Irish man Irish lad yeah one six Day. Yeah. That's pretty good. I feel like you're nodding well, like, well, like, you know you, like you hear this story all the, the time. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it first. Let's get you on the launch one. Yeah, hit five actually, on the launch. Let's see it big boy. Well, the reason a lot of golfers, though, we think like that is because you might go on the par three that is 150. It's a yeah. bit down breeze, a bit downhill. You, do, you hit your 9-9, nine, nine, yeah. middle of the green. You hit yeah. that shot 150. Yeah. But that's because of obviously conditions on the day. Yeah, Just because you've done it once doesn't mean you do it all the time. What's the best way then yeah. for amateurs to actually find out the distances? Do you think it's having a gapping session with a pro or something? Yeah, Is gapping it? sessions are good. Um, I work at a top tracer range and that's really good. Obviously you need a flat calm day because wind does influence mm-hmm. it. So you've got to go on a flat calm day and just hit your, hit your shots and just yeah. write your actual numbers down. So many people say like, I don't really know. It's like 150, but they always talk about like, like the maximum distance rather than the carry distance so yeah. for me carry distance never really changes obviously the role changes every time we play yeah because it might be wet and firm interesting one then yep i would you say the normal club head speed is with driver like what would you say tall level driver club head speed is i know this tell me the answer then it's 114 miles an hour it is 114 miles per hour now yeah there's a bit of talk talk of the town rumors really that this lad apparently it's it further than me right how many things about I, used to go the, I used to go to the gym with guy he's pretty strong thanks james <laughs> really like your hair mate looks good thanks mate <laughs> <laughs> i like your shirt See See and yours. See <laughs> See i'll take my signs yeah. <laughs> get a little Throw gc next time <laughs> um so i want you to host a little tournament okay. between me and guy okay another one there's no trophy this time Let's unfortunately see it. i might lose again so before you, in fact, before we come to that, though, okay. Now this is the one you want. This is the one you want. Six, right? pi- six pints in, iffy. So pick a pick a oh, look. Oh, pick one. This is for Jake, and the prize is pretty awesome. He's got his fingers crossed out at the front. We've got stall tier. Stall tier. <laughs> Are they all stall tier? <laughs> Go again. Sorry. Sorry, such a person. Stalls. Stalls! There we go. A, two. Has there seen someone there before? Right, it's you. Tiger lad. Tiger hat. Yeah? What's your name? Ash. Ash. You're playing for Ash. Ash. Okay. We'll make yeah. the rules. I'll try my best, mate. It's been a while. Keep that. Unless he comes back. In fact, let's not tell him. A3 came out. Should I keep that? <laughs> Has he moved? Was that you? Gutted. Gutted. Ah. Gutted. <laughs> so, you best watch that pint. We're going to have a fastest club head. Speed. Swing speed. Me versus Guy. 
you've got. We don't want you getting involved. Shall I go? Shall we don't want you getting involved. Have you got a coin? Have you? No, oh, no, it's probably it's not. Archie. No, Louis, mate. Can't flip a, can't flip a <laughs> note. I've not. No. Um, who wants to go first? Rock, paper, scissors. Who goes first? Nice. You can go first. All right, okay. So three swings. Fastest club head speed. I'm going to swing right this way. Like right over you a little bit. Now, I want my glove because I don't fancy like, letting go. So we're miles per hour. Should we be doing this, really? <laughs> Just one second. One second. One second. <laughs> you best, best pop them on. You best pop them on just in case. Just in case. This, three, how many uh, goes one. each? Three. And it's your best one. Yeah, okay. fastest one. Don't double it. it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I've got to see. Make sure it's all. I'll swing a bit inside. You watching the swing play? Yeah. Get that. <laughs> just, I'm just going to aim straight between. Just, that's a good line, isn't it? Have you, all right, here we go. Deep breath, Rick. Come on. <laughs> Remember that breathing technique. 118. Pretty good. It's not bad, bad for a warm up. It's not bad. Are we doing all today? No, I've got. I feel you like know he knows what to do. Did you, did you feel that? You felt that, didn't you? You felt the speed. Oh! Wow! 28. Wow. 128. That is fast. That is fast, mate. It's just like really like a stick. <laughs> so 128 is my fastest, right? Here we go. Ah! One two five. He's getting tired. Good, well done. He's getting Thank tired. You. One two eight. To I need the glove. One two eight to beat. That's fast. That is fast. I'm trying my best. I hit, I hit three really good shots. That was so. good. Like That's big good. hooks left. Well, That's all I like to see. Shot That's face. My shot. That's my shot. Little sniper. Okay. <laughs> Let's move that a tad. Oh, uh -oh. oh, he's oh. moved it. Oh. Doesn't he recalibrate I think he needs recalibrating. <laughs> Which way do I grip it? It doesn't matter that way. You grip it. Like, do you want me to help you? It's all right. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fire those zips. Oh. 127. Oh. 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 See you guys. Yeah. 128. 128. Oh. Little draw. Oh. 130! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have Rick's glove? Well done, mate. See you guys. Let me take this. The proof is in oh, the pudding. Class. Thanks, guys. Thanks, James. Well done, mate. Thanks, well mate. Done. Nice, nice shirt. Right, nice thanks for coming to the Guy Charnock podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Imagine then. Well done. Oh, bloody hate this game. <laughs> right, anyway. <laughs> yes. You know what's annoying? I came up with all these ideas, these little challenges, these fun things to try and win, and I lose everything. Should you have a guest on to calm you down a bit? Oh, I'm sweating, man. Knackers off. Right. Um, yeah, I think we've got, we've got, this is actually a really good lineup next coming in. Right. Not just the guests, but what's coming out straight after the guests. Oh, have a minute. You're not hot. No, I'm fine. <laughs> that was like 80%. <laughs> do I get a long drive trophy? Can I keep this? What the hell? We're not making that much money for this. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, our next guests are, we've got a YouTube channel. They're absolutely killing it at the moment. And they've had some phenomenal guests on. <laughs> And Ange. <laughs> Put your hands together for Tubes and Ange. What a reception. It's going to hold my weight. What a reception. How, how, cool, how cool is this? I'm not sure about it. But this. You, you're not like used to all this stuff, like. You're a big T. You're a big TV star. Hold on, mate. It's all, we're all right. It's all right. Oh, yeah, we're in. Uh, don't know what is my handicap. Don't know what is it. Bad at golf. That's probably it. How fast you swing? No idea. How you fast you cut <laughs> golf balls enough? I'm gonna beat somebody tonight. Um, thanks for coming on, Thank gents. You really. You've you. had a bit of a trek to get here. No, you run. You run. Did soft end this morning. Finished the show. 
straight up the motorway. But it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, mate. 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 Yeah, he did enough and he slept. And drove. <laughs> um, well, thanks for coming on. You enjoying the show from the sidelines yeah, so far? It's, it's, it's so good. good. It's such a good turnout. It's like it's brilliant on the side. Good. You boys are smashing it. Well done. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know what? I remember when you first started making YouTube videos. I was like, Who, who's this TV guy coming over? <laughs> coming over to our world. Coming over to YouTube. How dare he? Um, I found myself watching like full length episodes, like interviewing like some of my, you know, obviously my, my football icons, you know, because I'm such a <laughs> big football fan now, like, like Zola and David, who yeah. the, um, <laughs> <laughs> the <classic. laughs> yeah. 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 David Zola is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go David Beckham, but I thought, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Crouchy recently, that was quite oh, cool, wasn't it? One. That took you a while to get right, Crouchy. Oh, yeah. like a labour of love. I must have been so annoying. I'm like, hello, mate, phone to you next Monday. He's like, oh, I can't get you, sorry, mate. Like, next Monday? He's like, mate, would you just piss off? <laughs> <laughs> I will do it, but it's taken, what, two years, is it? We've well, since I started the channel, yeah. Yeah, about, yeah. Yeah, about two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's why you started the channel, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to get Crouchy on, but that was worth the wait. It was great. Who's on, like, the ultimate bucket list now? Is there, like... Give me three names that you would absolutely love to have on your channel. Football golf. Either. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Well, is it just foot? Have you got like objectives of having guys on as well? I know you've had some non-golfers and you've had all the stuff as well. Sorry, non-football. You've had like golfers on or whatever and just general celebrities. But yeah, are they all golfers that you want to get on, or is there somebody you really think like? Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Yeah, Harry, Harry Kane's out there. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Uh, I'd love Gareth Bale. Uh, Rory McIlroy would be brilliant. Oh, Imagine Rory McIlroy doing, McElroy doing the birdie dance though. <laughs> hey, I'm not we quite... Did, we didn't oh, well, that's true, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It, but so. I also didn't think I'd walk out in front of these, like with safety glasses <laughs> on and gloves. <laughs> 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 I reckon your birdie dance was the best birdie dance we've ever had on the channel. We had a video, yeah. Declan Rice or Rick Shields. Rick Shields, and you absolutely smashed it. Of course I did. Of course I did. I celebrate my birdies because they're so rare. I'd love Rory McIlroy. Um, I, I, we were quite lucky because I had my hero and I had Jan Franco Zola on, and it was like it was a four-hour challenge, and I was literally just walking. You were all over the gap, weren't you? I couldn't. Absolutely, all over the gap. Every time we answered, I was just like looking at him. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, are you going to talk really times? No, yeah, no, no. I love that bloke. I just wanted to cuddle him the whole way around. Because <laughs> <laughs> so you're Chelsea fans, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, John Terry been on. JT yeah, yeah. was on early doors. Yeah. Lampard. Lampard don't play no, golf. He's not interested. Really? Well, I want to get Would you ever do like a, golf. I was going to say yeah, a mini golf kind of segment. Yeah. We'll try, yeah. yeah, so we're going to try. But I might do foot golf as well. Oh, that's quite because good. Because we, we, we're loving the channel so much. And like, like, we always say on the channel, but like the, the comments and stuff like that, I, I'm, like, I'm amazed. Everyone's like, it's great, it's great, it's so nice. So it's just given us that bug, do you know what I mean? To do more and more and more. And like, some of the footballers that I'm lucky enough to know don't play golf. So it could get crazy. Starting there, yeah. A lot of long starts. Start 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 so. yeah. Biggest name in your phone. Who's like the biggest? Who's like the biggest <laughs> A-lister? He doesn't text me. He texts Sky. Asking for his PA. Are you asking? If it's, if it's me, it's probably him. Benzo, he is. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Um, James Corden, maybe? James Corden. James Corden. <laughs> That's quite cool. James Corden, yeah. your face time James Corden. Huh? I think it's not me in your phone, James Corden. Well, he's quite a big bloke, isn't he? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, It'd be me then, wouldn't it? No, I don't know. You, uh, want, you want to FaceTime him, or? <laughs> <laughs> um, quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Even I'm like, no. Get out there. No, just, well, just Jan, just for me, Jan Franco is over. Yeah, like, yeah, like again, I'm biased. It's a boring me saying. I don't know. It's a, it's a football fan. Does everyone like Jan Franco Franco's 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 Franco's
you put in those footballs on like a Declan Rice, who's probably one of the the footballs that kids most look up to these days, certainly down in London and stuff, and what he's done for England. If they know he plays golf and he makes it look fun, they're going to go, oh, maybe mm. golf's not that boring then, maybe I could have a go. But also, I think organisations are now sort of finally allowing it to be cool because like when I started playing like five years ago, I really know the story, I like, gave up the booze and yeah. I was like, right, yeah. I need something to do because, you know, I can't go to the pub anymore because I've got a massive, oh, massive yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, that pal. But, When I was, but when I went there, it was, all, it was still quite stuffy five mm. years ago. Now it's like everyone seems to be playing. So I mean, yeah. Like five years ago, if you did this, I think the audience would be a lot older. Yeah, I mm. do. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're all absolute geezers, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. Do you know what I, mean? I think I think the organisations are allowing it to be cool now. Yeah, well, like great, with fashion, the fact game. that you can go and join a golf club now and not need to pay astronomical fees to join a golf club. Exactly. Like, it's much more accessible. Totally. Mm. How do you think it then continues to like, develop to even like, push out to even more people? Do you think there is a way of being able to... So currently right now, as of last year, there were 63 million golfers in the world. It's actually gone up to 65 million golfers in the world. Mm. So until we get 65 million subscribers, we ain't finished. Because yeah, we've got, we got, <laughs> we got a lot way to go. We've all got the internet, right? What's the uh, exactly. Yeah. How do you think it could like get to like a hundred million golfers that play golf like we live in golf so it's hard sometimes to look inside of golf but for you guys i was saying social media it yeah keeps going everyone's on it Do you know i mean regardless of 60 or, or 15 16 if you keep pushing it out there it's accessible and it's fun yeah it is isn't yeah, it and enjoying it i think uh, this might sound stupid but i think the clothing also helps that mm. people don't have to go and buy it. you know they can wear a polo top and of course go, you can't come on here sorry exactly you know what I mean I think that helps as well that clubhouse rules relax yeah, yeah. mobile phones hats and I mean I, I get I get I get the fact that you know tradition's good and I'm 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 a big fan of it but just relax it a bit yeah like, exactly you know, you know, you know, you know, I do like getting dressed up though you know when I'm going golf oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Know, I like getting a bit dressed right. up but yeah. like if if, if, <laughs> if jeans were allowed I would wear jeans no, or like, what about tracksuit pants, if tracksuit pants were allowed? No, I don't think I would. No, I don't think so. Isn't it weird that they're like... Yeah, yeah. yeah night golf. Night yeah, night golf, yeah. yeah. Right I wish we had a few more of them in the UK, that would be like... Is there class. any in the UK? Jukes don't think there is, is there? Yeah, Jukes yeah, Jukes 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 is there really, yeah? yeah. That's yeah. quite yeah. cool. It's pretty cool. I really want to do that. I really want to... I really will... We, sorry, not me. want to take the channel, like, you know, like what you do, like, because you, that's your full-time job, like, taking it abroad and stuff like that. Imagine us two Herberts on night golf. Fair enough, and day golf. Exactly. Mm. So, yeah, that's what I love the channel so much. I just love, I just love golf. So. Yeah. So, right now, have you got anyone lined up for the next like episode? Can you give any teasers for everybody yeah. listening? Uh, Lee Hendry Monday. Lee, Lee Hendry on Monday, and then we've got, <laughs> and then I'm buzzing. We have got Joe Calzaghi. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. wow. Boxer, yeah. So doesn't do a lot either. Doesn't, doesn't do a lot of media. Yeah. So yeah, we're buzzing about that. Like my friend Darren is a, like an ex-boxer. He was like, yeah, text him. He watches it. I was like, what? Joe Calzaghi watches? Game no boxing. way. Pick around on a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, amazing. I was like, so I got his number. I was like, I'll try it. And he was like, yeah, come up to the valleys and we'll do it. Like, no yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's so Joe Calzaghi. That's going to be fantastic. We've got. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick wants to come on. Oh, nice. Well, that's cool. Um, so, a lot, do you know what? It's, it's been amazing, though. Yeah, people want to do it. Yeah, you come on then. Yeah. <laughs> you can all come on. I'll give you a tenner now. Yeah, so, yeah we've, got, we've, got, we've got big plans. So, when we finally find out our handicap. But oh, yeah, where's that going? Where are you up to I'm, at the I'm moment? Sh I'm shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with that. Yeah. Why, why, don't, why don't you do a... I support him all the way, but I'm not going to disagree with it. Big Ange is going to be single figures. Why don't you do... Maybe we'll his first hole on our channel. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Oh, yeah. We birded it. We birded it. You got two in your story. Yeah, of course you did. Well, where, is yeah. When's this going to come? I've got... Yeah. I've, 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 I've got an idea. Yeah. Go on. Why don't, why don't you do a trade with Bad Golf Channel? So you go to Bad Golf Channel and then John comes to <laughs> John and Ange <laughs> and, then you're, and then you're with Alex. <laughs> the two shits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you'd have to change the name and every, yeah. everyone's happy. No, do you know what my problem is though? Like, I think I'm half decent, but if I duff one or like Shank Lampard or whatever, like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I, get I get really like, my head goes. 
And I, I'm never, in any other walk of life, my head doesn't go, oh, well, okay, well, I can deal with that. I hit a bad shot. Ram Ruiner. Ram Ruiner. That's a Ram Ruiner. Ram Ruiner. Ram Ruiner. You just said Shank Lampard. What other ones have you got? Oh, Honestly, we don't. It's not. It's not constructive. We don't write them down. It's just pass and yeah, 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 absolute gold. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Damien Duff. Yeah. Damien Duff. Yeah. Ricky Howler. We just talk absolute yeah. bollocks, and people seem to like it. So. Oh, that, that's yeah. good. You know what I like with your videos, though. When we make a video, we're so conscious of trying to make it like engaging all the way through. So there's no real chance for to turn off. But when I watch yours, it's just, it feels just dead natural. Like, there's no point where, if I get into one, I don't want to turn it off. And it's not always super fast pace. Oh, cheers, mate. But it Thanks just feels that. like it's good to watch. Uh, I appreciate Killing that. it. And we don't, we don't act up to the cameras. This is what we, this is how we play when we, we we're doing all the Shank Lampards and Damien Dubs mm. and like, and all that. It's like, that's what we do. It's, it's fun, just like, well, it's I, it's it's fun. I must we're admit, though, golf. I be good at don't, it's fun. Think you, I don't think you'd do a birdie dance with the cameras not there. Oh, 100%. You do a birdie can, without the cameras there. Yeah, I get a birdie on yeah, top of the he's off. Yeah. yeah, he's on the 15th. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sometimes he's it's gone. a great birdie dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. no. That is funny. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Right, we've got a big tournament coming up. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And we're the only four that have not picked right. names okay. yet. Who would like to go first? Bye. Uh, there you go. <laughs> You've been picked. So who are you playing for? Right, okay, tier two. Way up in the top. A49. Yes, baby. Yes. What's your name? Matt. 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 Right, we're going to win you a good prize, Matt. You better have that, baby. <laughs> 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 He's the guy that commented. <laughs> good Ange. Right. Whoever gets me, you're fucked. Stall tier. Stall tier. Stall tier. B Brava 40. B40. <laughs> <laughs> Don't seem too happy about that one, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no? 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 Shall I put it back in or what? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, stall tier B40. What's your name? What's your name? Oh, Jeeves. Oh. Really? Oh, I feel like no one signed that seat and they just no, go, I'll just claim it. Alright, <laughs> right, right, Jeeves. Sorry. Tier 2, A16. Tier 2, A, 16. Yeah, is that someone? Yeah. What's your name? Jack. Jack, you're playing for Jack. Yeah. Jack, on, tier yeah. 2, A, 16. I'm just going I'm, I'm to host it. No, no. <laughs> this is your game. It's a chipping game. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put that one back well, in. I feel like I want it to be A. <laughs> Front row. I feel like I always just want it to be you. Yeah. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Right. No, Nowhere near it. A. Oh. In the stalls. M, yeah. M, nine. Oh, it's close. A nine. Yeah. Well, that's actually a lot of pressure. Like right up in front. What's your name? Paul. 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 You don't know the prize. You've not seen the prize yet. No, Stay with the prize. You're going to Dubai for two weeks. <laughs> because the prize brought to us by our good friends at Motor Cab really is. So this is the prize. This is what you can win. This is yours, Paul. Do you like it, Paul? Do you want it? It's yours for a good price. It's yours. Right. So we are going to have a challenge. Can we have all our guests back on stage? Give a round of applause for John Robbins, Sophie Walker, James Robinson. I know what. Okay. Wait just there. So we've got a club, and we've got some balls. Which ball should we go for, Paul? 
I don't know. Blue ball, blue. Blue ball, blue. Yeah. Oh, we go and blue. We go and blue. Right, I'm, I'm having that blue one. Look at them skills. Like that one. Guy, do you remember who you're playing for? Do you, uh, remember his, do you even remember his name? My mate, Ferret Man. <laughs> what was it? I can't remember your name. Matt. Matt. James. I'm Jack. Blue, please. Okay. John. Do I get a practice one because I'm left handed? Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to go. Oh, yeah, come on, left handed, come on. Yeah. Self. I'm going to go red for Dave. Go ahead. Lads. That's what you got to pick from. Just remember your ball. Right, I remember. No, I don't. John's playing for. A29, Tom. Tom. Yes. You're playing for Ash. Ash. A2. You're playing A2. for. Three. Can't even remember. I'm playing for Jack. Okay, can we have the target by our glamorous assistant? By the way, this is Matt from behind the scenes of the podcast when we say, Matt, what time is it? <laughs> Don't stick anything through that hole. <laughs> so what, are we having one go each and then the ball stays there? <laughs> <laughs> Little Matt showing up. Yeah. Right, one shot each. Closest to the bullseye. This is the darts reference from before, by the way. I'm not going to go first. What loft is it? This is a 50 degree. <laughs> so will be happy because it's Callaway. Callaway wedge. On, Who would like to go first? Seeing you pick the first name. Mm. Now John is left-handed, so you've got to give him a bit of leeway here. Oh, that's, oh, that's that's so Come on. Sorry, Tom. I'm so sorry. Here's a left handed club. Strange things have happened. I don't have left handed clubs. Nice. Oh. I've got one. Do you, Self? Are you going to go up next? Go on, Self. Who are you playing for? Pressure. Can you remember who's Sophie, who's Sophie playing for? Mark. Mark. I'm going to push for a minute. Oh. <laughs> 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 Here she is. Oh. So it's inside. James Robinson. Right, there's like. James, who are you playing for? Can you remember? Ash. Look at Ash down here at the bottom. Let me just get Ash. Ash, are you going to give James Robinson, the best player in this room, any tips? Okay. Back foot. Back foot. Shaft lean. Wow. Forward. Wow. You can blame Ash now. Right, go on, James. Oh. Hold it. Give it to him. Whoa. Come on, tubes. Are you playing for tubes? Ange going up next. Come on, come on, big one. Come on, big one. Who's Ange playing for again? Not really, I don't want to go. 
Who thought of this for this stupid game? <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> Slightly embarrassing. That. So basically, bullseye wins. I like how you just didn't wait there. There's like no waiting. How's B40 doing I'll, I'll now? Give you, I'll give you one chance we can swap right now. No, 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 swap. No, please swap. Please swap. <laughs> right, so Bullseye wins it. All right, okay. Come on, Rick. Come on. Bullseye wins it. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. <laughs> so, and man. <laughs> well, who was it? Still tier B40. I didn't catch his name. Harry. Harry. Harry, wherever B you are, love you. B40. Have you got, have you got a car? <laughs> this is yours. Can we do the beers? Take on the train. Beer, beer, you dance with big hands. Right, Harry, can you get down here run. in like 15 seconds? Go. Run, 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 run. Get up right, in here, yeah. baby. Is that you? You can come through. Come on, keep going. <laughs> here he is. Give us a round of applause. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> this is yours. Don't worry, thank you. Hey, that's the new use where we Oh yeah, thanks. And James was James was your place second place. Who was your guy again? You win a nice little rangefinder. <laughs> I'm really Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for coming down. We've raised shed loads of money. We've had loads of fun. You've all got absolutely tipsy. This guy's hammered. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks and uh, hopefully on to the next 100.